Hey guys, welcome back to another Destructible Mesh tutorial in Unreal Engine. Uh, I appreciate you guys checking this video out. I've appreciated the traction that my channel has been getting, and hopefully we can keep it up. So, that being said, let's get into some fun stuff. So let's go to Starter Content, let's go to Architecture, and we're going to make a wall. So let's choose this really big wall, 500 by 500. Right click on that, and create a Destructible Mesh. All right, so we can zoom out a little bit, see the wall at a different angle. Let's uh, raise the cell sites up to 200 because that one look pretty nice and hit fracture. That looks like a good um, wall fragmentation. We'll go back to preview depth zero and we're gonna leave enable impact damage off because we actually want to um, have this be a pretty solid wall until you start shooting it. Um, we can also choose custom impact resistance if we had impact damage that way maybe if the wall fell it wouldn't break. Um, we also have our debris lifetime minimum and maximum which only works if we have our debris timeout set up which I'm not going to put on because I want my debris to stay there and they tend to despawn after a while anyway. Um, accumulate damage we will leave checked because that means when you shoot a piece, if you keep on shooting it, eventually it will break, as opposed to if you don't do enough damage the first time, you're not gonna do it the next time and it's never gonna break. Um, let's go ahead and leave the rest as is for now. We need to make sure we can actually break things. Uh, actually, let's do world support because we want this to be able to be supported by the world around it and not just fall over. So let's hit save. Let's close this. And let's drag our wall into the game. Alright, so what you're going to notice is, um, actually let me see if I could turn the sound off for this um, for this tutorial because I don't want to make it so loud for you guys. So let's just break this link, compile, and that hopefully will avoid playing that sound. Yes, so now there's no sound playing and we can shoot projectiles. You can also see this cool looking block broken there and we'll leave that there just for a bit. All right, so what you'll notice is this does not break this wall. If we simulate physics, it gets knocked over just like other things, which we don't want to happen. Uh, let's place it a little bit under the world, and it is not an ideal situation. So, what we want to do is adjust our first person projectile to work with uh, destructible meshes instead of regular meshes. So we're going to add a new component to our bullet called a radial force. So we're going to add component. We're going to choose radial force, which you can actually type in, uh, which I might do in a second if I can't find it. Here it is. It's under physics and destructibles. Uh, so we're going to go to radial force. Good. Now if we go to our viewport, we can actually see what that looks like when we have a giant circle around it. Um, and we don't want it to be that big, honestly. So we can go over here to radius and lower its size to maybe about 30. That seems good. And we also want to change a few of the settings. Um, in our original blueprint, we added an impulse um, to all physics actors. In this, we want to add an impulse to uh, our destructible mesh only. So let's hit 5,000. We also want to add force strength. Let's change this to 1,000 because I like the way that the effect looks. And then we need to add destructible damage. So let's just put 500 to make sure that whatever we hit is going to break and maybe spread some damage to everything else. So we'll hit compile. And let's close this and hit play and see what happens. 
so nothing <laughs> because there's one step that we forgot to do that I forgot to do let's open up our first person projectile again and we need to fire this radial force so let's drag radial force here drag off and type in fire and you'll see fire impulse and all we need to do is fire this impulse before everything else and hit compile now let's try this again we see that we can actually break these pieces great and we can't seem to break that yet so let's just see what I might have done wrong let's hit play there we go so I turned off simulate physics and it is now properly working now world support is interesting because if I place it here it will break and um, just kind of fall everywhere but if I place it here and I think I need to turn on form extended structures but I'll check in a second yes we do need to do um, form extended structures so let's go back to our uh, architecture so starter content architecture and open up our wall and we're gonna do form extended structures and what this is gonna do and let's actually fracture this again to save okay what this is gonna do is when I break this actually it's not doing it let's see what did I forget Damn. oh right support depth so when we form extended structures we need to choose what depth, so one or zero, is supporting uh, is supported by the world. So we're actually going to choose one for support depth, and hit check. And now we can break pieces off, right? because all these in the broken spot are supporting each other in the world. And the cool thing is. If I break enough of these, that will actually fall. But it's still breakable. Very cool. Um, the reason I placed it in the middle of this wall is so you can see that it's supported by that wall. Um, let's try another thing. Let's go ahead and make some rebar, right? Like a pillar. So let's right click on this pillar and create a destructible mesh. We're going to leave all the things the same. We're going to choose accumulate damage, world support, form extended structures, support depth one, and we'll leave the rest as is. Let's put 200 pieces here and fracture it. Very nice. And we'll hit save. And let's place this pillar into our level. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to grab a cylinder. And I'm going to resize this cylinder to 0 0.1, 0.1, and 500. No, that's not size, that's scale. So let's place this here. So we're trying to get a similar size for the pillar and the rebar inside. That looks about right. So let's drag this into our pillar. That looks good. We're going to copy and paste it. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. And I know it's not going to be a perfect square, but um, let's see what this does. 
So that didn't quite work. It broke everything in it and only held pieces inside. But we want it to work more like a rebar wall. So we need to, oh, support depth one. I don't know why that didn't save. All right, so let's try this again. Yes, so now we can break this wall, but it's still structurally staying up. So we can make a really cool looking building being destroyed and you can still see the rebar in the building holding things up. It can get a little glitchy because I put, I basically put a weird structure of, of cylinders in there so some things are getting stuck, but it's a great effect for your game. Um, if we went in and got rid of some of those, it would look a little better. So for example, let's leave these two and try this. Yeah, so it breaks, leaving pieces. This would look great in like a, a black style game. That was a great game. And then um, what if we wanted to do something fun? Like let's go to this wall, destructible mesh and let's go to fracture effects and we're going to go to the first number because we want to make it look cool when it fractures and let's see we don't have much here we do have explosions which are fun but i actually really like fire so if i choose fire and hit save when i shoot this wall um it's going to catch on fire so just like if i was throwing a grenade or something so i shoot this breaking pieces out and the building is now on fire very cool I like it a lot all right so another thing we can do is apply sounds and um, effects to different areas of it uh, let's hit save and let's try some materials uh, let's go ahead and uh, filter materials and see what might look nice so let's choose poured concrete maybe that would look nice If it would like to load, there it is. All right, and let's put forward concrete here too. Let's hit play. So now we have this concrete wall, and when we break it, oh, I still left the fire. I probably shouldn't have left the fire. That's okay. Um, it breaks as it should. Very nice looking destruction. All right, so that's the, that's it for this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any suggestions on things you'd like to learn. Uh, this works with all destructible meshes. It's really powerful and really fun to use. All right, so thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Peace.